guys. I thought I'd try um, showing you some actual uh, painting time, painting speed, rather than the time la lapse videos I usually do. Um, and I've never tried to film a big painting. This is a 20 by 20. Uh, it's an inch and a half thick gallery wrapped canvas. And then I never know, that's why my comments might be interesting. I never know, like, am I going to keep the background I've got here? Am I going to lighten it? Am I going to add more texture? Um, right now, I'm just sort of putting one layer of everything down. So I put the background down, and I took some process photos. You'll see them ahead of this video. I'll put it all together in one video. And then I put color down, but I can, you probably can't see, but I can see some of the green coming through. Um, some of the horizon line. So I definitely need to put a little more color down. But I thought since I was going to paint this side that it might film decently. Um, I don't know. That might be interesting. Please tell me in the comments if you think it's interesting. <laughs> I'd love to know because I want to show what you want to see. And then I also thought you might like to see my messy palette. It's just a styrofoam plate. Uh, because I can stick it in a Ziploc bag, a gallon Ziploc bag, mist it with water, and the paints will keep for quite a while. Um, I've never really tested to see how long they'll keep, but they'll keep for several days. And then this is red oxide, uh, unbleached titanium. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the camera to see what it, if it looks like right, right, like I'm pointing at it. That's uh, white, titanium white. Uh, raw sienna, burnt umber, and then that's Mars black. Sometimes I don't use black, I'll mix the complements to get a black, but in this case I need so little of it, it's just easier to use the Mars black. I sort of think my light's going to be coming kind of from this angle. You can see I've got it lighter here. So I'm going to mix a little white and unbleached titanium and we'll see how this goes i might need a smaller brush this is a an angle brush it's actually quite a cheap brush i don't even know what the brand is um i do have a reference photo but it's off camera what i did was i found two creative common zero photos um and i put them together because i wanted the cow looking its nose, because I just think that's funny. And then I put it on top of another photo. So sometimes I can't do that, because you got to find, you know, same, same or very similar cow, similar angle. Anyway, that's kind of, so I put this down just for some shadow. And sometimes I end up completely covering it up. Sometimes I And leave it. We're going to see what that looks like. See, you can, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it kind of shows through. So stroke direction matters um, for the fur, but it also isn't super critical because I'm just getting the first coat of paint on. Covering up some of that green and then some of these, like the unbleached titaniums, sort of transparent which is good if you want the shadow to show, but it's back. So I don't know that you can see that on camera. I can see the green showing through from the background. And then I don't know, like when I lean into paint, if I'm in the way. <laughs> uh, live and learn. That's, I also thought it might be kind of interesting. This is how I spend a good chunk of my time. <clears throat> if I'm not on social media connecting with you guys, I'm making art. I also uh, make art on my computer, like for the uh, fabric patterns. I, I either, like something this big, I photograph the art. Um, if it's small enough, I have a scanner. I put it on my scanner and scan it into my computer. And then I use the whole image or use part of the image and create patterns. I know that's not very clear, but sometimes what I would, well, I suppose I could do it. Let's see. Because the camera isn't going to move. Turn it. So 
I don't know if you've watched any of my watercolor videos. I talk about how pulling a brush is way easier than pushing. Well, this is straight up unbleached titanium. I was going to put some white in it, but then I thought I need the color of the face. It isn't white on this side. So I think I'll lighten it up after I get a layer or two down. So for me in acrylic painting, which isn't, well, it could be in watercolor too. It's all about layers. And if I didn't, if I really was concerned, I could have painted that side white and then painted it with the bleach titanium and none of the green would show through. But I don't mind that it kind of mutes the color. I just don't want, like you can't see it here, but I just like, I don't want that horizon line. There's a, there's two straight lines. I don't want that showing through, so it needs more paint. But I kind of like how it comes through a little bit and it ties the background in a little bit better. I was also thinking about making this maybe more impressionistic after I get the first layer. Layer of paint on. Okay, I think I need to turn it in. I kind of, I almost lost some of those shadows a little too much. Just mixed a little burnt umber with some titanium white. Oh, I think that kind of works. So I'm trying to get in the uh, definition on the, the cow, but I also don't want it too dark because this is the light side. And that's the darker side. I think I'll paint a little more, come back. Okay. Um, I just woke up my cat when I said that. I don't know if you could hear. Oh, I don't think you can see it. So I have taken a square brush and I, well, first I took a detail brush and kind of worked on the eye a little more because so I was trying to figure out where the eyelashes are going to go, you know, how bright the white patch under the eye is going to be. And then I took a this flatter brush and then I was putting in um, just square strokes, sort of square strokes or not literally. And I think I like that, although I don't think you can see it on camera as much, but it gives it a little more impressionistic feel. I think I'm gonna do that all over the, for a second coat. Sometimes I'll kinda, of, like I haven't finished this ear yet. I kinda of work in different things, see what I like. Like I couldn't figure out how to do this side, so I finish the eye a little more and then I'll come back with some lighter color. There's not, there's sort of a rhyme and reason to it. Because like if I don't know what to do, I usually work on an area some more because it's like the eyes are important, the nose is important. So that I can kind of figure out how the rest should relate to it, if that makes sense. I think that makes sense. But I'm liking... I, so when I do pet portraits, I do them quite real, realistic. So I was thinking that this might be a little more fun. So while this isn't, well, this is sort of the most important side. So what I've done is a lot of times you divide a canvas up into thirds and then you put something that's of most interest on the third. And then this is a third too, pretty much right here. So it kind of makes that a bullseye. So I'll have my brightest brights against uh, the blackest blacks here where these whites won't be as bright. So that would pretty much be my center of interest, but it's hard to resist. We'll have to see how it looks once I get that tongue painted in there because it's going to really change it. Sorry, I just gave you guys a little art lecture there. <laughs> there is there is a structure to a painting, even a portrait. 
So what I have a tendency to do and a lot of artists do is to use a small brush. So that's why how I get it quite real and quite realistic. Um, and I've heard many artists say that it's a good idea to use the biggest brush you can while you're painting. I'm also kind of just liking the, oops, if that's too cool. I want it warmer on this side. Let's see. Oh yeah, use the biggest brush you can. When it speeds it up, it loosens you up and it makes usually makes the painting more interesting. So all I'm doing is just kind of have a muddled puddle color going and then I'll lighten it up. I'm just looking to see what I'm doing here. So I grabbed a little raw sienna and some titanium white. I guess I was thinking too, like, so it, it's helpful to watch other people paint if you're interested in learning to paint. Um, some people just like to watch it because it's relaxing. I want to do here? I think I kind of need, probably should put the eyelashes in. I'm kind of playing with the squares right now a little bit. And then when it gets subtle, so the camera smooths it out. I think what I'll do, um, before I put the process photos I've already taken of the earlier stages of this and put it with the, this in one video, I think I'll do a close up so you can see it. So that's similar. I don't know if you've seen my bumble. I did a bumblebee painting where it was all, it's pointillism, but it was all square shapes, kind of like I've done here in the background. That's one of the reasons why I'm putting these square shapes on the cow is to tie the pattern from the background to the subject. So it's not like I have one style for background and one style for subject, although I've done that before. Um, I did a bee painting that I suppose you could call pointillism. Oh, I don't like that light color up there. Oh, we'll let it dry and then we'll fix it. Um, oh, I kind of like that. Sorry, I paint and I try to talk and then... <laughs> I'm gonna paint some eyelashes, and I think I'm going to try some squares in here to see how I like it. But the eyelashes in the photo, so one thing about using a reference photo, it's great for getting things, you know, lined up. Um, this cow's kind of, I don't know, it's almost like pulling its cheek up a little bit, so that made that eye a little higher. Um, I didn't change that, but you don't have to paint it just like the photo. You can do however you want. But I like to follow it because a lot of people that buy my paintings are like, oh, that's a such and such cow. Oh, you cannot even see those eyelashes. They need to be lighter. Oh, if you guys know what kind of cow this is, put in the comments. And I'm going to be looking for title ideas. I have a few that I've written down. Um, but I would love... I forget to do it, but when I ask you guys for title ideas, you come up with the best ones. I, I think I've used every one, every time someone suggested a title. Um, well, that's not coming out right. I haven't used every title suggested, but I've used one of the titles suggested every time. You guys are super creative. All right, I might even put like white eyelashes in here just to see where I'm going. Alright, I guess I, um, I'll leave it running for a little bit and then uh, shut it off and we'll come back when I get further along. Because I just can't be that interesting watching me paint. But it does let you know that it's not fast. Those little bee paintings I've been doing lately the in my Believe in My Wings series, 
Um, they're four inches by four inches. Gosh, they take me three hours to paint. And then that doesn't even include my supplies or varnishing. And I don't know, I've been selling them for 25. So they're a good deal. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna like that. I don't suppose you can really see it. Let's maybe try a darker color. So I just mix some dark umber, or uh, yeah, yeah, umber and raw sienna. So when I paint, um, I don't normally talk. I can tell it's kind of freaking my brain out a little bit. That's okay. It's good to learn new things, do new things. Okay guys, I'm gonna paint some more and then we'll come back. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm gonna work on the tongue. And I tried to get the camera a little closer. So that's Prism Violet, Portrait Pink, Unbleached Titanium, and White. And I'm gonna underpaint the tongue to help cover up the green. Oh, my brush is a little, I wonder if I forgot to wash my brush out. That's a quick way to ruin them, is not to wash them out when you're done. Eh, I think it's all right. All right, so I am almost think I'm just gonna paint it white. Maybe grab just a little, a little purple for shadow areas. Of course, I'm uh, getting kind of particular here. Really, I just need to get some paint down so it covers the green. And then I can come back and work on detail. I kind of need to raise my easel, but I also don't want to mess with my tripod and my phone height. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see. I'm getting closer, you can't really see me grab the paint. I wish you can kind of see what I put on though. So do you guys paint at all? Are you art enthusiasts? Um, do you sew, make crafts, make anything? Anything can be creative. Since this underpainting part isn't that interesting, I may, uh, Turn off the camera here. Oh, so there. I anchor my hand with my pinky. Because I'm not, a lot of times you draw with your shoulder and you don't move your fingers or your wrist at all. But when I'm kind of in here close, and I put it on the canvas and I anchor it with my pinky to help keep it steady. Just a little art tip if you're new to painting. And then, although you'll see me, I don't do it all the time, pulling is way easier than pushing. All right, I'm gonna work on his tongue a little bit and I'll come back. 
I'm back. I'm going to step back a little bit because I'm making a shadow. So that tongue looks pretty good. Um, but I need, or I want, this to be darker right here. So I'm going to put some of that in before I go back and work on the tongue some more. And I might actually, I might kneel down here and see how that works. Because I don't want to move my setup. Oh, my cat's talking to Hey, Freckles. You knew I started videoing, so you had to talk. Oh, it's not that dark. It's still not that dark. So this is mostly burnt umber. And some portrait pink. Oh yeah, that gives it a little more oomph. We need some more oomph. I think I'm gonna stop it even though I just started it. Oh, here we can paint out here a little bit. I got light pretty quick. I grabbed just a smidge of water because my brush was getting dry there. That's better. I think you can see those brush strokes. There you go. Okay, I started painting and I wasn't videoing. But see, I've got a better edge there. Makes that tongue pop out more. You'll know your paints are, your acrylic paints are getting old when they get kind of sticky and they just don't, I'll say perform well, that's gonna sound kind of funny, but you get to know, you get a new tube of paint that's really nice. If you get a tube of paint that's kind of cottage cheesy, kind of lumpy, take it back. It just, it probably got frozen in shipment or something. Or I suppose it could have gotten too hot. I usually find that it happens to me in the winter. Is my head in the way? Oh no. My studio, of course my hands are always red, but my studio is warm. So it makes my hands even redder. You know, instead of fighting it. Let's turn it upside down. Yeah, of course, this is going to be wet, and I'm going to want to put my finger on it. Here you can see that uh, painting is still too pink. Paints can take a lot of work, because there's at least... On my paintings, there's almost always two layers. Because I'll paint a background, and then I paint the image over it. Every once in a while I don't do that, but it tends to also take more time. But the detail, I'm really liking these sort of cross hatching in the squares. I think that's fun. Um, even though this isn't as detailed as, say, one of my pet portraits, it uh, still takes time. It takes time to anyone to see what's popping, what isn't, what needs more contrast, what needs to be smoothed out, that kind of thing. I think I want to flip it over so I can see. Oh, I just put my brush in my mouth. Let's flip it over. Let's see how it looks. Oh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming, coming. I'm going to paint some more on it and then I'll show you how it's looking. All right, I'm going to put some of the. I call them pixels. There's square shapes on the tongue. I just got my brush a little too wet. Let's see what that does. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. A little bit. So purples are really strong. So I'm just trying to get a little teeny bit on the tip. I don't know if that changed it. 
I can see it change it, but I don't know if it changed it. Oh, that changed it a lot. Let's see how that looks. I can't totally tell. Um, I suppose the tongue is the most interesting. Even though I talked earlier about, you know, one third. It's probably tongue, eye, tongue, kind of going in a triangle. Uh, that's just when I, I don't know if that made any sense. That just, that just means how the eye moves around the painting. I only want some purple because it's kind of, I'm kind of glazing. It's pretty thin. I'm getting kind of subtle here, where it's like, here you can really see the brush strokes, but what I'll do is I'll kind of get it all laid in, like I haven't done this nostril yet. That might be about it. And then I'll go back, I think the ears are pretty much done. But I'll go back and, like here I kind of like this area, but I'll go back and put more color swatches in. I think I like this area. Kind of balance it out a little bit better. I don't know what I might like. Let's try lightening that. Let's catch a little highlight there. Oh, kind of like that. Of course, you, you try to see, I kind of, when cloning, I don't want to, you try to make your strokes random. And then I'm kind of, even though I'm doing squares, I'm also kind of thinking of the direction of the structure of the tongue. That's getting there. Okay, I'm probably gonna stop it because I don't know how long this video is getting. Maybe the next you see is me pretty much finishing because I really got a lot of it figured out Okay, talk to you guys soon. I ended up fin finishing this pretty quick. I think I'm done. I usually look at a painting for a few days and see what I want to adjust. But I like the soft, um, I call them pi like big pixels. Sort of impressionistic pointillism on top of the realism. There's some art terms. How it turned out, I think it turned out really nice. It's an inch and a half thick. It's a 20 by 20 inch canvas. Kind of zoom in so you can see. Yeah, I like the texture of some of those brush strokes. It's really nice. Anyway, um, I didn't want to film too much more because it's getting to be an hour video. Let me know what you think. I may try this again. Um, I'll get better at how much to film and how much to talk. Um, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your social media shares, um, your comments, all that helps me reach more people. Um, so many of you have bought journals from my online store or face masks with my art on it. I just super appreciate all that. All that helps. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.